Bonjour and welcome to some more, to a little look at some more Bronze Age beauties. And for a change, I have got, I hope you're all sitting down, I've actually got some DC Comics back issues. Yes, I hear you cry. About time, I know it's about time, but I, I can't, I can't deny that I've, I'm just a lifelong Marvel Comics fan, but thanks to Paul at Comics and Fantasy in Hornchurch, Essex, a fine purveyor of back issues and new comics, I picked up the first 40 odd, including of this, and the reason I'm saying all this is because this was one of the rare times that I actually picked up a comic, a DC comic, in this era, in the Bronze Age era. So we're talking about, for these, what were they, mid-80s? 80s, yeah, they, they was around the mid-80s. I would be heavily into Marvel, except for this. I don't think at the time I was even picking up Batman. It was all Marvel. Perez, Perez got me on this. It was only because of his artwork. But what a... What a romp this comic was. <laughs> it really was. And yes, that is issue two. And yes, that is the first Deathstroke. Yes. Key issues are plenty. Well, it's not now until issue 44, which was the first Nightwing. That So I, I will just scroll through some of these wonderful, these wonderful George Perez covers. Absolutely stonking covers. Look at this stuff. And like I say, it was only, it's only because I I have I had all of these. As I say, I bought them as they all come out. But you know the story by now. I opened up comic shops and a lot of my collection went in. And I am now getting the the highlights. I'm, I, I want back because I only ever bought the stuff that I enjoyed. I never I never got into the um, pros prospecting side of of, of things. But look at some of these covers. I've been really enjoying these covers. The, the fearsome, the fearsome five. <laughs> Perez was a class act. And what I have noticed, and I have only been leaving through these, I haven't I haven't been um kind of like reading because I mean Marv Wolfman on the writing, my god, I thought Chris Claremont actually it would it would have been Claremont around this time on would it have been but anyway, Claremont on his run of John Byrne X-Men and Marv Wolfman on this. My God, was it a soap opera. But you just enjoyed it. I, I don't know. I think I think us comic collectors are softies, you know, because we do really hold this run of, of new Teen Titans and Cl Claremont and Byrne's run on Uncanny X-Men. We do really hold them in with, with a lot of fondness and affection. And I think it's because we really did get involved. Look at this cover, like I say. We really did get involved in their day-to-day -day shenanigans, like who loved who and the little love triangles and, you know, who's getting all Donna Troy, you know, later on gets married and et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's, it's what made, it's, I don't know, there's only so far that where the, the all the powers are going to are gonna take you. To be, I, I, I think, in my in my humble opinion. But anyway, so thanks to Paul, I, I won't go through every single cover of um of the of every single issue. But some of these, I mean, this one contained a free Captain Carrot pull out. <laughs> I've just noticed. I haven't even had a look at that yet. Can't wait now. Can cannot wait. She's possessed. Some of these covers are brilliant, absolutely brilliant. What I will show you, well, this one here, Introducing Terror. Is she friend or foe? Oh, she doesn't look much like friend there, does she? <laughs> but brilliant, brilliant stuff. Speedy is back in this one, in this issue. And actually, spoiler alert, Terror was a friend, yay! She joins the new Teen Titans. So, let's get to, you're thinking, yeah, all right, shut up now, shut up now. Show me the first, show me the first Nightwing. 
Now there it is. So happy to have that. I don't think I'm, 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 I may have skipped this one. I think I stopped getting, if I'm honest, I think I stopped getting the new team, team titles before this one come out. So this is the first time it's been in my hands. Come on. I'll do that in the other videos. All right, that's what she said. That's the first time I've had this bad boy in my hands. There you go. You all happy now? Uh, and I, I love it. I love it. You, you know, not that, I'm, and I'm not a key issue um, hunter as such. I want, I want the runs of good stuff. Like I want the Perez new Team Titans, which I have now got. And there was that just one other cover. I am going to show you. I mean, that's issue forty nine. I can remember getting that. Although I said I think I might have stopped. I can. I don't know whether I've got that like uh, cheap. In, um, this one, I just, I just love the the play on words on this cover. Raven, Nevermore, which if you don't know, it's an Edgar Allan Poe poem, and in the poem, it's a it, they say Nevermore, Nevermore, and I just like the fact that they use the character of Raven and they they had a little wink at Edgar Allan Poe, and the other quick thing before I move on was I didn't I I'd forgotten that Brian Bolland started doing the covers. And there's only a couple of odd issues that came with the that came with the run that Paul that Paul hit me up. So that's a bit of Bolland there. And that's a bit of Bolland there. Not I wouldn't say there is most fantastic of covers, but I just thought I'd show you a couple of little now yeah, let's put them together a couple of little couple of little Bolland covers early on you know mid, mid 80s so you know that, that that's early days so thanks to thanks to paul i've evened the balance on my back issue collect uh, collecting but that's not all because jamie and his faithful assistant lizzie over at new dawn comics in rayleigh also in essex also another fine purveyor of back issues and new if you're ever over in that end of England, specifically Essex, specifically UK, quite important. Thanks to him, I've picked up this, the first Barbara Norris as Valkyrie. And do you know why I'm going to make a big fuss of it? It's because that right there is the real Valkyrie. Forget I know this is our happy place, but just forget what they've done with it, with this brilliant character. And do you know what? Yeah, she was designed to appeal to a male audience. Do you know why? Because it was the male audience buying the comics. <laughs> Maybe there's a lesson to be learned there, eh? About how you do the films and how what creates a good character for a film that earns money. Anyway, we're not going there. Well, even though I just did. I, I just love this group. These and the Avengers. These more because they were misfits. And also because in England, they were these stories, these comics I'm collecting here, I never had. I never could. Because they were reprinted in, uh, in black and white in a comic called Rampage. Rampage Weekly. And that's where I first started falling in love with... So I've got a soft spot for the Defenders because they're the first group. Them and the Fantastic Four. I don't know why it's all the groups lately. So the FF I try and collect as far back as I, as you know as the, as the wallet will allow. Uh, Jamie is very kindly has got a whole has got a lovely run, lovely deep run of these and the Avengers, like I showed you a couple of weeks ago, like the Avengers issue two. Yes, so. I don't know, I've just got an affinity with these groups, but this, these, and, and I suppose these in the FF, because they're odd bods, if I'm going to really dissect and analyse why I think I like these, it's just because they're a mismatch. Uh, sinister, a squadron sinister in this one. I'm surprised that's not a key, I don't know. And then, you know, when you've got Namor the Hulk, Doctor Strange, and, and the, I mean, the Silver Surfer turned up in one of them, didn't he? Yes, you know, the Silver Surfer turns up. He's a member. 
And again, you know, forget the defenders on Netflix. This was the defenders, you know, there's nothing. Why they had to call that little group in that Netflix show defenders, I, I, I don't know. I, I really, really don't know. Just to get the name of a comic in a, on, on the telly, I don't know. Anyway, these were a proper look. Nice Gil Kane cover there. Brilliant. Just a little, just a little taster of those. And I did pick these up a week or two ago, but these were buried. So I am digging, as you can see just here, I am digging through. And uh, they, I picked these up from Jamie. Uh, you know, just, just I think these just get into Bronze Age. A little bit of Bronze Age Marvel. It ended in 85, didn't it? So yeah, these are, 80, these are 83. And again, this was just... This was just a little mini series that I don't know that it's easy to it's just an easy it's just an easy Bronze Age you know not millions of quid he was a decent enough character I mean he, he never went anywhere did he Jack of Hearts I mean he appeared in Marvel Team Up I think you know they tried to make something of him but nothing nothing quite stuck so he was a bit of a failure of a character but it's just a little four issue mini from the Bronze Age and another one. That I can't understand why isn't worth more money. And this Kitty Pride and Wolverine. I don't know why this series doesn't go for big bucks. I don't know it's not exactly the best writer artist team in the world, but I still think this is. I don't know. I just think for X Men fans, I, I just think this is a, a great read, and it's it's a you know quirky enough quirky enough storyline. Six issues. Um. Yeah, you know, we get we're getting into you know the the, the samurai sh stick with 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 all the yeah I, I, I don't know just but perhaps it's just the creators you know they weren't hot shots you know they weren't George Perez or they weren't you know Frank Miller when he was on done a, that Wolverine four issues but for anyway for me I just think again it's a nice it's just a nice little set of comics from the Bronze Age it takes you back. It, it, you know, take takes well for me personally. Just takes me back to the era when I would would have first started seriously collecting, which would have been early eighties upwards. So that is it. Thanks to both New Dawn Comics and Comics and Fantasy, Paul and Jamie and Lizzie, respected. Well, you know, when Lizzie's not, no, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there because you know. You know, J Jamie does have his he, he does have his cross to bear sometimes. <laughs> I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Love you all, guys. Thank you so much for all those and doing me such good deals. So if you are watching, because I know you know there's there's guys and girls on Fred's now and they're all, if you are in the area and I think they both do a bit of mail order and eBaying and and whatnot, as in whatnot the what's it. So if you are after back issues and new and you're in the air, they're well worth checking out old school comic shops they're not they're not forbidden planet they don't sell all the junk from all the films we're talking about comics they've got funko pops and stuff but you i think you all know what i'm getting at love you all guys thanks again for all that lot and thank you lot if you are still watching uh, thank you for your comments and recently I've, I've noticed that, that thank you so much let me know if you're picking up anything sexy during the week and until next time i will bid you all adios